Hi, my name is Kara Jacobs Lifka. I'm a medical officer and part of the CDC COVID 19 response in long term care facilities. Today, we are going to talk about using personal protective equipment or PPE correctly for COVID 19. This is a part of the key COVID 19 prevention messages for frontline long term care staff. Your health is important and your residents need you to stay healthy. Personal protective equipment or PPE, which includes items like gloves, gown, face mask, respirators, and eye protection like face shields and goggles can help keep you safe from germs, but PPE must be used correctly or it will not work to keep you safe. The virus causing COVID-19 spreads mainly from person to person when they cough, talk, or sneeze. But some people can spread the virus even without having symptoms. So you should wear a face mask while you are at work all of the time. This is called universal face mask use and provides what we call source control because the face mask prevents germs from your mouth and nose from spreading to other people when you talk, cough, or sneeze which protects residents and other staff. CDC recommends the use of cloth face coverings for everyone who goes to public places for source control. These may be able to be used by nursing home staff who are not interacting with residents. However, cloth face coverings are not considered personal protective equipment and should not be worn instead of a respirator or face mask if more than source control is required like whenever you're caring for residents. What we have seen so far during the outbreak is that COVID-19 enters into long-term care facilities through the people who work there. You could spread germs to residents and patients without even knowing it. And face masks can protect you from germs by preventing germs from touching your mouth and nose. In order for your face mask to work, you have to wear your face mask the correct way. Do clean your hands before you put on and take off your face mask. Wear your face mask so that it completely covers your mouth and your nose. Remove the face mask touching only the straps. And if you're reusing the mask, fold it in half with the outer part of the mask folded in and store it in a paper bag or breathable container. Don't touch your face mask or your face and make sure that you don't pull your mask down under your nose. Your nose must be covered by the face mask. Don't wear your face mask on the top of your head, around your neck, or hanging off your ear. And don't store your mask on your arm or in your pocket. As soon as you become worried that a resident may have COVID-19, or if you find out that a resident has tested positive for COVID-19, you should be using PPE. A positive test result means that a resident has confirmed COVID-19, but that resident may or may not have symptoms. If you are taking care of a resident with a temperature of more than 100 degrees Fahrenheit or multiple temperatures of 99 degrees Fahrenheit or has symptoms such as shortness of breath, a new or different cough, sore throat or muscle aches, you should be using PPE because this resident might have COVID-19 or they are suspected to have COVID-19. Older adults may not show typical symptoms, so be on the lookout for symptoms such as new or worsening discomfort or tiredness, new dizziness or diarrhea, and make sure that you are using PPE. During an outbreak, when multiple individuals in a building are sick, or test positive, PPE may be required to care for all residents on a wing, in an area of the building, or even throughout the entire facility. Residents with suspected or confirmed COVID should also be restricted to their room. PPE for suspected or confirmed COVID-19, which as a reminder means that the resident either has a positive test for COVID-19 or has an elevated temperature or symptoms concerning foreign infection, 
or maybe in an area of the building where PPE is being used for all residents, includes face shield or goggles. Personal eyeglasses and contacts are not considered adequate eye protection. Goggles or a face shield that covers the front and the sides of the face should be used. An N95 or higher level respirator, if your facility has a respiratory protection program, fit tested staff and respirators, or a face mask, which is an acceptable alternative to N95 respirators, if N95 respirators are not available. A pair of gloves and a gown. It's important to recognize the difference between a face mask and an N95. The face mask fits loosely over the face. An N95 respirator filters the air and provides a seal around the face, but must be fit tested prior to use. PPE is currently in short supply, so implementing ways to conserve PPE right now is important to help prevent running out. Gloves should generally be worn for any contact with the resident or their environment. They should be changed and hand hygiene should be performed before moving on to work with the next resident. Gowns are recommended for use with each resident, but can be prioritized for activities that might involve splashes or sprays and for high contact care activities. And these high contact care activities are the same activities that have been discussed before with enhanced barrier precautions and include dressing, bathing or showering, transferring, providing hygiene, changing linens, assisting with toileting, device care or use of a device, and wound care. Extended use of eye protection and N95s or face masks if N95s are not available can be considered during shortages. During extended use, eye protection and an N95 respirator or face mask are worn for the care of multiple patients without removing them. Glove and gowns, if they are used, should be changed between residents. Personnel who don't come, in, come within six feet of residents might not need all PPE, but should still wear a face mask for source control to keep them from spreading germs to others. And as a reminder, universal face mask use means that you are wearing your face mask at all times in order to prevent sharing germs. The way that PPE is donned or put on is important. But first, before donning PPE, you should clean your hands. You then put on a gown, and this should be wrapped around the back of you and fastened at the neck and at the waist. Next, you put on an N95 respirator or face mask if respirator is not available, covering your nose and mouth. You may already have this on from using, from the universal face mask use throughout the day whenever you're in the facility. And even more specific details on this are covered in videos that can be found at the resource section at the end of the presentation. Goggles or face shield is put on next and should be adjusted to fit. And then last, you should, put, you should place on your gloves and extend them to cover the wrist of the isolation gown. The skin of your wrist between your gloves and gown should not be showing. It's also important to note that if you are reusing or extending the use of any PPE, you will still need to adjust your donning, you may need to adjust your donning and doffing procedures. In addition, if you're reusing eye protection, it will need to be cleaned and disinfected. And at a minimum, you should use gloves while cleaning and disinfecting these items. For doffing or taking off PPE, first remove your gloves using caution as the outside of the gloves is considered to be contaminated or have germs on it. One way to do this, as shown in the picture, is to use one of your gloved hands to grasp the palm area of the other gloved hand and peel off that first glove. Then while you're holding the glove, 
in your other gloved hand, slide the fingers of your hand that no longer has a glove on it under your remaining glove at the wrist and peel the second glove over the first glove. This may take practice and videos in the resource section at the end of the presentation can help further demonstrate this. You next remove your gown, rolling the gown down and dispose of it. At this point, you may be able to exit that area and perform hand hygiene. Then carefully remove your face shield or goggles, avoiding touching the front of the face shield or the goggles. These should then be reprocessed before reuse. Next, remove the respirator or face mask, unless you are practicing extended use, in which case you can continue to wear unless dampened or soiled. You would remove that respirator or face mask by grasping the straps behind your head and carefully pulling them over your head or over your ears and avoid touching your face or the front of the respirator or mask, which is considered to have germs on it and perform hand hygiene again. Donning and doffing PPE correctly is important in order to make sure that you are protecting yourself and avoiding contaminating yourself. There are links to videos on this slide of the process of donning or putting on PPE and doffing or taking off PPE, including if you are using an N95 respirator or if you're using a face mask and the process of how you would reuse face and eye, and eye PPE. The CDC website also includes additional materials and posters that you can print and hang in your facility as a reminder. Using PPE correctly is how you can keep yourself safe from COVID-19. Thank you.